When World War II broke out, I was a young student, proud to be part of the great British Empire. In those days, large parts of the world maps were coloured red. I turned 18 in May 1942 and enlisted in the Royal Australian Navy as ordinary seaman and sent to Flinders Naval Depot, passing out as a midshipman. In 1943 I was posted to HMAS Canimbla Landing Ship Infantry to land troops on enemy beaches. On January the 9th, 1945, I was part of the huge invasion of 650 ships which took place in the North Philippines, Lingayen Gulf on Luzon. There were ships as far as you could see. Transports, battleships, carriers, cruisers and destroyers. It was our first experience of Japanese kamikaze suicide planes. As Jap planes attacked, the sky was filled with exploding missiles Enemy planes came from all directions, avoiding heavy defensive fire and deliberately crashed into many unlucky ships. Luckily, we survived an near miss. Later, we were preparing to take part in the invasion of Japanese mainland when we got the news of Hiroshima. Peace was declared on August the 15th, 1945. At sea, we were at full alert because of possible attacks from Japs that refused to surrender. After VJ Day, the ship was engaged in bringing home Army veterans. On one trip, we had picked up troops in Borneo and called into Moritai. The Army had a system of points which related to the length of service in the war. It was decided in Moritai that some troops there had more points and should replace some of those on board. Then all hell broke loose. The soldiers insultingly refused to leave the ship despite the orders of senior officers. Finally our captain took the ship into the harbour and dropped anchor. He told the troops, as the ship was now at sea, they were subject to British naval rules and regulations, which had severe penalties for mutiny. He appealed to the troops, if the ship did not leave that day, it would not be in Sydney before Christmas, and this ship's crew had been without leave for 18 months, the longest period in the Royal Australian Navy. Finally, one huge soldier physically fought off several mates and strode defiantly off the ship. Shortly, there was almost a rush not to be last off. We sailed for Sydney and arrived one day before Christmas. I was very pleased to be given leave. I was demobilised on the 24th of May, 1946. In four years, I had changed from a boy to a man but I hope that in the future we can do this without wars. What a waste.